Jesus. Surrounded by the Lord. This is how we fight our battles. The battle yes. is the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Give him a hand this Jesus. morning. Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. So if you need to leave uh, before that door is unlocked, you can go out through these double doors because they'll lock automatically by themselves when you come back in. I just think the Holy Spirit's telling us to pray for you right now. Oh, well, hey, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, we have been taught through your revelation, through Nathan, God, that this is what it is for us, God. You have called us for this perfect time. We go out as your army, Lord, in this land, Lord. We go out and speak the truth to people, God. They cannot deny the spirit. They cannot deny your spirit, Lord. So we will continue to fight and move forward in this, Lord. Thank you, God, for the strength that you have given Nathan, Lord. Thank you for our pastor and our church family, God. We just praise you. And I see right now the increase in stature that God has given this pastor. Ten feet by ten feet by ten feet raises his stature this day. His power, his authority, the anointing on the word, the word, the word that flows forth to break the yoke of the enemy, to break the bondage and set the captives free. Oh, I see him raised up in Stature, that the waters flowing, the river flowing from this has raised up from the thighs to the waist to the chest. Be faithful and I will give you the increase to where you cannot cross it. But today I raise it. I, says the Lord, raise you up in stature and in power. Now go forth and preach the word that I have given you with boldness and in authority to utterly defeat the enemy. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. I receive it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Two of our warriors right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord uh, gave me a couple of things here, and I'm going to share something at the end of this. I've got a not too long a message here, but I've got something that the Lord gave me the other morning that I want to share with you as well. But the Lord is saying to me that we're going to see what real revival and real awakening is. And it, it always happens in a time of great darkness, great distress. And uh, so, you know, we can uh, yell at the darkness or we can thank God for the light. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going we're gonna to experience some powerful things. I'm excited about the times that we're living in. They're, they're, they're scary if you don't have the Lord. But if we have the Lord, we know that, uh, amen, light always shatters the darkness. Amen. And no matter how dark it gets, in fact, the scripture says the darker it gets, the lighter the light shines. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Praise God. If, let's just get right into it this morning. Uh, God bless all of you for being here. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you, uh, those of you that are joining us on Facebook and online. We appreciate you being with us as well. And uh, you are a part of the body of Christ and part of this uh, body as well. And uh, we appreciate you being with us and praying with us and being a part of the service. So God bless you. And uh, may God bless us all today. Amen. With his word, with his presence. Praise God. I want to start uh, this morning in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and uh, beginning at uh, verse 15. Well, I'm going to read uh, just verse 15 there, and then we'll move on to another scripture. But Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 15, praise the Lord. That which has been 
has already been, excuse me, that which has already been and, that, and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Now let me read it, actually read it this time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That which is, has already been and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Chapter 8 now in verse 6, still in Ecclesiastes, Peter. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of a... No, no, I want Ecclesiastes still, chapter 8, verse 6. Praise God. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Now let's go to Romans chapter 1. And I want to read verses 16 through 32, so it's rather lengthy, but I, I want to get through the whole thing here. I want to show you some things to begin with as we get into the Word. So in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 32. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. But that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God has also given them up to an uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to, unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into which, uh, to that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Praise the Lord. We're talking about homosexuality, sexual perversion. Amen. It's ungodly. We love the people. We love the individuals, the humanity behind it. But that's a demonic spirit. That, that isn't just a choice. That's something coming from hell that people are submitting themselves to, allowing it to take authority over them, and we're seeing it run rampant, and now they're even trying to teach demonic yep. expressions in our schools yeah. to little children who are not capable of resisting it. Right. It's from hell, folks, I'm telling you. And the, the, the government, the local, state, federal, I don't care who it is, can rant and rave all they want to about equality and friendliness and loving kindness and all the rest of it, but I'm telling you, you're not doing anybody a favor by letting them be possessed and oppressed by the devil. Right. Amen. And I'll be... Well, I won't say it, but I'm not, I won't allow it. I, I won't allow it for my children or my grandchildren or great-grandchildren to have that exposed 
them exposed to it. It's just not, it's, it's wrong. It's demonic. It's evil. And it's trying to destroy them before they have a chance to even come to a knowledge of God or an awareness of God. Amen? So now that's one thing. I, I don't know if anybody else saw this, but it was the most sickening thing I think I've ever seen. And I've seen some pretty bad stuff in my life because I haven't always been a Christian, praise the Lord. But this choir, this gay choir, and it showed them singing, and what their song was, we're coming for your children. Yeah, hundreds of them started out with one gay man and then another gay man, and then it showed the screen was just filled with pictures of all these other gay men that are all singing the same song, we're coming for your children, mocking parents, mocking grandparents, and then saying, we're coming for your children. So their, their, their agenda is clear. Yeah. They're, they, they're so bold now, they'll even stand up and sing it, amen, mocking the people that are watching it and telling him, hey, you can care all you want to, but we're coming for them. We're coming after them. This isn't about individual freedom. This isn't about a couple of people who have just made a poor choice and are going to live this way. This is about trying to shove some demonic activity and, and belief system onto our children. And it's wrong. It's from hell. And God's going to put a stop to it. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to pray for the people. We want them delivered. We want them to have a normal life, a life that, where they can experience the love of God and the goodness of God. But we're not going to tolerate the demonic oppression and, and obsession and possession of our children and our family and our loved ones and anybody else. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's go to 2 Kings now, chapter 17. And I want to read verses 16 and 17, Peter. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16 and 17. Praise the Lord. You'll be coming for my children maybe, but you're going to find something much different. Praise the Lord. You're not going to be happy with what you find. Praise God. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. They caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divinations and enchantments and sold themselves to devil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Praise God. 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 51 through 53. Praise the Lord. Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to uh, reign over Israel in Samaria, the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father, Ahab, and in the way of his mother, Jezebel, and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. Now we're talking about abortion. We're talking about the murder of innocent children. The shedding of innocent blood. Praise the Lord. Remember, we started out in Ecclesiastes. What has been will be. This, this, isn't, this doesn't come as a shock to God. He's been seeing it ever, ever since there's been humanity on this planet. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it shouldn't shock us. It irritates me. It angers me. But I'm not shocked by it, to be quite honest with you. I'm, I'm almost expecting it. Praise the Lord. So now let's go to, to Luke chapter 10 and verse 27 through 37. Luke chapter 10, 27 through 37. What has been will be. Whatever took place is going to happen all over again. Amen. What did he say? It's a circle. What goes around comes around. Praise the Lord. Now he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and, and thy neighbor as thyself. This rich young ruler asked him, he said, What's the great commandment? What should I do? What do I have to do to be saved? And he said, You need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Jesus responds to his answer. But he willing to justify himself, now this is the rich young ruler again, he said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? He's looking for, a, you know, okay, just this specific person, or that specific person, or this location, right? But Jesus answering and said, A certain man, so he gives him a parable. 
He says, A certain man went down to Jerusalem, to Jer- from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan. Now these were Jewish religious people. Now comes a Samaritan who they hated and didn't want anything to do with. He comes along. And apparently this man was a Jew who had been robbed and and was laying by the wayside after he'd been beaten. And the Samaritan comes along, and he journeyed and came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said to him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto the man that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Now look at uh, John chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. John chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. This is Jesus with a Samaritan woman. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a Samaritan, a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. In other words, we hate each other. Why, why would you even speak to me, let alone ask me for something? And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, you would, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living waters. Praise the Lord. Verse 27, Peter. And upon this came his disciples and marveled. In other words, they went, oh, my God. He's talking not only to a woman, but a Samaritan woman. People we hate, people we despise. Yet no man said, what seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? They knew there had to be a reason. They just didn't want to look like idiots for asking. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're talking about racism now. We're talking about racial division. We're talking about hatred. And I'm telling you, that's as clearly out of the pit of hell as homosexuality and abortion. It's division. It's hate. Wherever you see in that, you're seeing demonic forces. You're seeing the devil moving. This isn't new. What we're experiencing in the United States is not new. There's been this going on forever. I don't care. It isn't just necessarily people. It's people of color, but any color. And I've said it so many times. You're probably sick of hearing it, but there's only one race, yes. the human race. Yes. And we get, then, then it gets divided into two, and that two is simply those who are the race of God, the, the family of God, the children of God, and those who are not. Right. has nothing to do with any ethnicity. It only has to do with either believing what God has said or denying it. That's the division. And the devil hates it, yes. so he tries to create other divisions yes. to blind us to the truth, to what is really dividing us. It isn't our color. It isn't our... The, God, do you think God sees any of that? I believe he's invisible for a reason. You know, I, to show us who we really are is not what we're seeing anyhow. What we are are spirits. Amen. Speaking spirits. Praise God. So the devil is doing what he's always done. There's nothing new. None of of this junk is new. And it shouldn't shock us that we're seeing it, even though it's despicable, even though it makes us sick to our stomachs to see it and to be a part and have to live in an environment where it's taking place. It's not new. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Why? Because he blinds us to the fact that this is not something new. This isn't just unique to our generation. Mm -hmm. This has been going on since there's been human beings because humans are fallen. Praise the Lord. For we are not ignorant of his devices. And that's what we're talking about this morning. 
We're not ignorant. We know what he's up to. We know that we see it because we have the Spirit of God. Now, the world doesn't see it. They're just saying, well, we need to clean this up. We need to fix this. We need to get everybody on board so that everybody can agree. Amen. Everybody agree that it's sin, then we can all go to hell together. Praise the Lord. But being familiar with our enemy, the devil, and how he operates is the first step in spiritual warfare. Because if you don't, you're going to be killing people that don't need to be killed. You're going to be fighting against things that you don't need to be fighting about. And I, I, the, we're not fighting against human beings. We're fighting against demons. We're fighting against spiritual forces. And we need to keep that always in our mind. It's so hard. I'm telling you, I see Joe Biden on TV. You might as well know. I see him and I'm thinking, oh, my God. Shut the hell up. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. You know, really, I'm serious. And, I, and many others that come on there and they start their rant and, they're, they're, and I'm thinking, oh, my God. How in the world could anybody listen to this moron? Oh, we're not supposed to be political. I'm not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm talking about demonic forces that are manipulating at the highest level. Amen. And you know what God said to me? you got to love that guy. I said, you got to be kidding. And he said, no, I'm not kidding. You can hate the spirit behind that. But you need to, because I'm getting up every morning, and I'm up early, and I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem and for their protection and God's blessing upon the people there and, and keep them from their enemies and for the United States of America. Amen. That it would be restored to its original founding fathers, what our, our original uh, covenant was with God, that it would be a place for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be preached, to be established, and to be spread throughout this land and around the world. Amen. And that once again, it would be one, uh, you know, one nation under God. Amen. And I'm saying, remove the deceivers. Cast them out. Get rid of them. I don't care. Shut their mouths however you've got to do it. And the Lord finally, after <laughs> several weeks of this, the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, you've got to love that. You've got to love them. And I said, well, then how am I supposed to pray when I want them gone? I, I, I don't care how they're gone. I just want them out of there. Yes. And he said, you need to pray against the Spirit. Pray for them to come to a revelation of Jesus Christ. Come, get, pray for them to come to a place of repentance and pray against that spirit. Amen. Don't pray against the person because they're just in ignorance. And if they don't repent, they'll get plenty. There'll be plenty of punishment. But right now, we need to be praying for them to get delivered. And I'm talking about everybody, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. If they don't know God, we need to be praying for them because that, that leaves them wide open to the forces of the enemy to manipulate them and use them, amen, in ways that the ignorance in the, in the normal world out there won't know. They just see, whoa, that's the president, or that's a senator, or that's a congressman, or that's the governor, or that's a mayor. And we've been blessed, folks. I'm telling you, yes. uh, none of these people are perfect by any means. I don't care what uh, nope. political party they're from. But at least some are, are staying with the, yep. uh, uh, at least something that's close to Christianity. If it's c true conservatism, then it is in a lot of ways some of the principles will, will be the same. Right. But that doesn't necessarily make them Christians. They need to be saved. But there are more Christians becoming willing to stand up and identify with who they are and what they are. Why? Because the forces are, are coming out of the closet on the other side, so to speak. The enemy's exposing himself. So now we're getting to the place where we have no choice. If he's going to show his face, we better be showing ours. We better be standing up to this. Amen. So that's where we're at. Amen. Look at uh, Mark chapter. Or let's see. We, we've done that. So we need to love people. Amen. And uh, despise the devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's our responsibility towards the lost. Now we can talk about revival all we want and, and how we want to reach the lost. But, you know, God's going to think we're hypocrites if we're out here trying to reach somebody across the street or uh, at the grocery store and we're trying to curse the president. Yeah. Amen. It's hypocrisy. Because this isn't love that we understand love. This isn't like love for your wife. This isn't like love for your kids or your grandkids. And This, this is a choice. Yes. David said when he was going through all of his hell, he said, I will. He made a choice. He, he said, I'm, I'm making a will, a choice of the will right now. I'm going to love the Lord. Even though it doesn't look like he's got anything to do with me or helping me or being with me or anything else. But I will love the Lord. Yes. 
And that's what we have to do with these people. It's a choice. It isn't an emotion. It isn't a feeling. You're not going to get all warm and fuzzy. I can't help it. I don't even want to look, but I'm saying, God, help him. God, deliver him. God, bring him to a place of repentance, whatever it takes. Praise the Lord. Because we have no concept of how horrible hell is or what they're going to be facing for eternity. And God never sent anybody to hell. Ron and I were talking about this earlier. Jesus chose to go to hell. God didn't send him. He had to make a choice. He said, not my will, thy will. He knew that it was his will that he would suffer and be sacrificed, but Jesus had to make the decision to do it. And it's the same way with every human being. God will send nobody to to hell. He has made it possible for everybody to be included in eternal life in heaven. But they choose to reject Jesus and to accept the lie of the enemy. So it isn't God because God is mean and mad and vindictive. It's because people are ignorant and demonically controlled and manipulated. Amen. So we need to, to love people, hate the devil. It's a responsibility. That we, it, it's, it's our responsibility to the lost. It's our responsibility to the oppressed. It's our responsibility to the demonized. It's our responsibility to ourselves. Praise the Lord. It's obvious. You know, you don't need me to tell you. There are multitudes of people that are held hostage by the devil in their own minds. Right now, everywhere around us, we see them every day. We experience it. You watch a little bit of TV. I can't watch much of it or I'll freak out completely. And I'll have to be born again again. Hallelujah. Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. But... As Don said, we, we, this stuff is touching all of us in some way or another. Everybody knows somebody who is being manipulated either through homosexuality yeah. or uh, hatred and, and, and strife because of racial uh, unrest and, and confusion, amen, or abortion. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. And you can't escape it. And, and it's, it's, it's so much everywhere now that it's probably touching every one of our lives somehow in our families, cousins, nephews, nieces grandchildren, whatever it might be. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That word destroy is actually uh, translated untie, untying or unloosing. It's the same word that's used in Luke 3.16. That's where uh, John says, Jesus said, baptize me. He said, hey, I'm not even worthy to untie your shoe or unlatch your shoelace. It's the same word. So Jesus came into the world to untie, to unloose the devil's binding. Amen. His, his way of in, in, enwrapping people and tying them up and confusing us, even as, as uh, Suzanne said, uh, compressing them and, and oppressing them and, and restricting them and constricting them. Praise the Lord. He's this binding power that the enemy uses over people. Amen. Look at Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That's what he did with us, right? We have the Holy Ghost, so we have power. We've been anointed. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Well, God said he'd never leave us or forsake us. He's with us. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the anointing. So we have power. So our position and our job is exactly the same as what Jesus was. Amen. He expects us to do the same thing. If that was his main concern, that needs to be our main concern. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you. And we've heard this for a long time, but I'm telling you it's the truth now. We may have just been saying it to get more people in the building. But I'm saying now, playing church and having religion is done. It's, it's over. Because now the rubber is meeting the road. And, and there is the separating of the sheep from the goats and the wheat from the tares. And God's saying, okay, who's on my side? We're, we're back to the who's going to kill the, the prophets of Baal or who's going to submit to them? Because that's where the world is today. So we're either going to be the real deal or we're going to get sucked up into all the crap with everybody else. That's the only options. Amen. Amen. So since that was Jesus' main concern, it has to be ours. In order to free people 
from demonic oppression, we've got to know how to recognize the works of the devil and how to overcome his attacks against us. Amen? And how does he come against us? To the mind. Yes. See, God is doing some things here that we, you might think, well, you know, we're, that's cute. You know, you, you prayed for Suzanne and, and uh, prophesied, you know, the, the princess uh, warrior. And Look, I, I didn't think any of that stuff. And I'm telling you right now, I, I wasn't like I had a speech plan because I didn't know I was praying for anybody. It just came out at the very end of the service. I realized, oh, we're supposed to be doing this, you know, because it's been a long time. And so I prayed for several people. I, I wasn't thinking. I'm telling you, that's what I'm good at, is not thinking. I just said the first word that came out of my mouth, and it just came from there. It was the Lord. So we're, people are being uh, put into uh, offices of the Spirit. People are putting, uh, the gifts are being recognized, and they're being sent forth. Why? Because God knows this is a time that we can't just come and clap our hands and say, praise the Lord, and go home. People are going to have to start doing what He called us to do from the very beginning. And listen, whatever that calling was, He knew it before you were ever born. So you need to recognize it and step into it. Whatever, however you feel led, you need to be doing it now, because we don't have time to be screwing around any longer. The church is going to have to grow up into the full stature of Jesus Christ, and that means all the gifts have to be in operation. So it's not surprising to me that we hear Suzanne shouting and, and declaring and prophesying and people coming and, and saying, I believe it's the office of the apostle. I, be, I believe it's the office of the prophet. I believe it's the office of the evangelist. It's the preacher. Yes. Yeah. Why? And if you said it, it is. Yeah. That's the point. If you've said it, if you have the courage to speak it, then God's going to back it up. Praise the Lord. So we've got to learn. If we're going to overcome this demonic oppression, we've got to know and recognize how the devil works, how to overcome his attacks. And the mind is the main thing he attacks. Because the mind is the primary area from where we function. Even God uses our mind. He uses our conscience. Amen. But the devil's goal is to plant a stronghold of deception yes. in some area of a person's mind. These people that are being manipulated, it's their mind that's being manipulated or the schools wouldn't be so actively involved in it. The devil knows if I can get their mind, I can get them all. I can get everything. Yes. Because if you're operating in the spirit, he has no way of fighting against you. He has to deal with your brain, your thinking. And so the school systems may think, well, we're just trying to enlighten people. No, you're a tool of the enemy right now. You're letting the devil use you to indoctrinate children, amen, to capture their minds and to bring them into bondage to the devil. That's the truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if he can get their mind, he can control and manipulate them from there. He can get them to do anything. If he can get into a, a person's mind, he can get them to commit su suicide. He can get, get them to commit murder. He can get them to do anything he wants them to do. Yes. Go gay, go queer, go whatever. Hallelujah. Think about the hidden manna. This has nothing to do with this, but hidden manna. I just thought of that this morning and... Jesus said, in, the, in Revelation, he says, I'm going to give those who are overcomers, I'm going to give them hidden manna. Now, Jesus said we are more than overcomers through Jesus Christ. We're overcomers by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus said, I'm that bread. You think Moses gave you bread, gave you manna? He said, no, that manna came from heaven. I am that bread. I am that hidden manna. He is the hidden manna. He, and He's going to give us a revelation and illumination of His Word. He's going to reveal that Word to us in ways that we've never seen it before, church. I'm telling you, He's going to reveal the hidden manna. The hidden manna is simply the Word of God that we haven't understood yet. It's always been there. Jesus said, I'm that hidden manna and I am the Word. And so God's going to start giving us revelation and inspiration, illumination of His Word, so that we can see what's always been there before, but it was hidden. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hidden manna. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 8. I'm going to move faster here. Praise the Lord. Romans 6, 3 through 8. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? 
Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So, dead men don't respond to anything. Nothing in the natural, right? And living the crucified life is a critical part of spiritual warfare. Now, we've always thought that meant, okay, so you've got to be some really weird hocus pocus. No, what he's saying is, just like what I said the Lord spoke to me about President Biden. I want to hate the guy. Because he's a dork. You know, he's an idiot. He's, he does stupid stuff, and he's, and he's creating all kinds of chaotic messes for everybody. And my natural guy, my natural me, wants, would, would just like to see him drop over. I know that's horrible to say, but I'm saying I'm talking about naturally. Just getting out of here. I don't care how you do it. Just get rid of him. But i got to live a crucified life. In other words, I can't let that natural man or natural mind dictate how I'm going to act and respond towards situations or I'm not going to have any more power to affect the enemy than anybody else has. I've got to submit this flesh to the Spirit of God or I'm not going anywhere. Now, I know how to do it to preach, but I don't always seem to know how to do it to live. And that's what God is saying. We're in the time now where we're going to have to live like we're preaching all the time. Like, like we're always operating under the anointing is what I'm trying to say. That we have to take control. The spirit has to take control of the mind and the flesh or we're not going to be able to do anything about the enemy. It's just that simple. Praise the Lord. Remember, the real battle with Satan was won at the cross. It was won when Jesus gave himself, amen, for us. So that we could be like Him. So that we could operate by the Spirit. That same Jesus, victorious over the devil, completely defeated the devil, and now He's living in us. Yeah. Right? The Holy Spirit now dwells within us. Yeah. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. For you are God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that's in the world. So spiritual warfare has to start with this basic understanding. Yeah. i got to operate from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I can't let this thing determine how I'm going to respond to the situations right. and circumstances that I'm dealing with. Right. Or I'm susceptible to everything that everybody else is susceptible right. to. Right. I can be overcome by the enemy just as quickly as anybody. Yeah. Jesus already accomplished victory over the devil. It's a done deal. But the only way we enforce it is by the Spirit, the same Spirit that overcame it in the first place. You can't go back to the flesh and think you're going to do what Jesus did by the Spirit. If it took the Spirit of, of God in Christ to do it, it's, it's sure enough going to take the same thing in us. Look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Praise God. Hallelujah. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Yes. So when Jesus' work on the cross was finished, he descended into the lower places in, in order to take the enemy apart, to literally dismember him. Yes. Amen. And so piece by piece, he dismembers him. He totally spoiled principalities, powers through his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. They were totally plundered. All the demonic forces, amen, stripped bare, exposed for their weakness, for what they really are, amen, left with absolutely nothing to retaliate with. Disarmed, completely broken, amen. So we've got to approach warfare from that perspective. We can't let stuff scare us like the disciples did when they saw the kid freaking out and you know, vomiting up foam and whatever else it was and jerking it, and it scared them. They, they, it was just weird. Yeah. And so they backed off. And what, why, why couldn't we do this? Give us more faith. Jesus said, you don't need more faith. You just need to have an understanding of who your faith is in. Right. 
We need to realize our God is bigger than all of this crap, and that's where we need to put our trust. Because he's already whipped him. And we can enforce that whipping, amen, simply by operating by the Spirit of God and not by our own understanding. Ephesians 6, 12. So the battle is not only for the minds of the people out here that are gone crazy into gay stuff and into uh, racial division and, and into abortion. It is, it's our minds too because the enemy uses that same way against us as he does them. So if we let him get into our minds, even though we have the spirit, we're still susceptible to being manipulated by the enemy. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We've got the victory, but the only way to maintain that victory or to enforce that victory is by the Spirit. That's why we need prophets. That's why we need evangelists. That's why we need preachers. That's why we need, you know, everything that the gifts have offered us and all the offices of the, uh, uh, of the church have to be filled and they have to be in operation. So when Jesus' work on the cross was done, it was finished, right? Yes. So he's talking here about high places. So the real battle is in the mind. Yes. Just think about it. You don't have to watch Fox News. You sure don't have to watch CSNBC, whatever it is, MSNBC. You don't have to watch that long before you're freaking. Right. Yes. Before you're angry. Yep. And anger comes from fear. Right. So you may not say, okay, I'm afraid, but I'm really ticked off. That's because you're afraid. That's why you're angry. That's, that's what's happening. And so it, it doesn't take you long to realize that's what the devil's using because yeah. if he can get us into fear, he's got us in the flesh yeah. because the spirit of fear yes. doesn't come from God. No. He's given us a sound mind, amen, peace, so on and so forth. So victory is in you. Yeah. Victory is in me because the kingdom is in us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. The kingdom operates. And we, those of you coming on Wednesday nights know it's seed time. And you should know it anyway because it's been preached long enough. It's seed time and harvest. It's sowing and reaping. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so uh, our seed is the word of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. If you're sowing something else, if you're just sowing anger, angry words, swear words, it might make you feel a little bit better for a moment, but it's not accomplishing sick them. Nope. It's not doing you any good. You need to take the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and use that. That's your spiritual weapons. Amen. So, amen. Uh, uh, with all the present problems, with all the potential problems to come that could be even greater. Man, I was listening to Rodney Howard Brown for a little bit last night, and he got me totally freaked out. I'm expecting him to come to my door with machine guns and drag me out and throw me into jail someplace. You know what? And they might. If this went on long enough. If we didn't stand up and do what we... Because look at what's happening. I mean, it's progressively becoming more and more of a dictatorship or a, a socialist, communist kind of regime, amen, and eventually, if it isn't stopped, it'll just keep going until there isn't any resistance at all. Right. Yeah. That's not going to happen. I'm just saying that's what could become if the church doesn't do what right. the church is supposed to do because the church is the only one that's going to be able to stop this. Right. Praise the Lord. Whether you've known it or not, I have prepared you for this moment all of your life. You may not feel that you're ready, but I say you are ready. You are more than ready. You are equipped, both spiritually and mentally, to overcome any force, any enemy. And because I'm with you, it is finished, saith the Lord. Praise God. Our problems are no greater than those of the believers who have gone before us. It may seem like it is because we're living in it now. But let me just share a few things with you. When the church was born at Pentecost, nations were in revolt. National boundaries and borders were being erased. They were disappearing. Violence was everywhere. It was in their entertainment. It was popular. Godly morals in the Roman world were nearly non-existent. Rome was 
uniting the world. They were overcoming nation after nation after nation. They were bringing them all together politically, economically. They were establishing a one world government. Paganism, the occult, homosexuality, perversion. Read a little bit of history and you'll see it real quick. It's not, it's not hidden. Amen. It's all there. Perversion. It was rampant. Racism. Look at, just look at the Gospels. If you don't know what racism is, read it, because that's what was happening. The Romans were out to destroy anybody who wasn't like them. Amen? Murder of children. Everywhere, they were sacrificing children. They would come in and they would kill everybody. I mean, look, look what Herod did. Look what the, the, the Pharaoh did. Sacrifices as well. The devil used all of those factors as a part of his plan to destroy the church of Jesus Christ. He was doing that. He was wanting to destroy it before it would destroy him. He knew its purpose. He knew what it was for. And his plan to destroy the church failed miserably. God had another plan. The early church rose up in power. Praise the Lord. In the spirit of God to meet the challenge. And so will we. In this day. What has been, will be. Yes. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And those weapons are more than enough. They're, they're more than able to defeat any foe, any demonic foe or otherwise, any stronghold. The stronghold that those early believers faced were real. They knew what strongholds were all about. They lived in, in an environment of paganism, demonism, yeah. idol worship. It was unimaginable. They had to live with religious, social, political opposition. So much so that they were regularly attacked physically. Christians were imprisoned. They were put in the Colosseums. Christians were the great entertainment. Their murders were great entertainment. People by the thousands paid tickets to come see them do it. They were butchered. They were eaten alive by wild animals. With thousands of people in the Colosseum cheering them. Not the Christians, the animals that were eating them. And just like the entertainment today, the theater then was blatantly sensuous, sexual, full of vulgarity, lewdness. Sexual scenes were fully acted out on the stage. I, I'm a history freak. I, I, I mean, I, I've got books on all of this, and I can be happy to share it with you if you think I'm just making stuff up. It was as vile and as disgusting as you can imagine. It's a historic fact. Homosexuals were everywhere in their leadership. Nero was a gay, was a, was a bisexual. So over and over, they had these great sex parties, and it was men with men, men with women, and then men with other women, and then men with women, and then women with women. I mean, it was just, that was their party. And today, the devil knows this is his last opportunity. And he has to do his damage quickly. But how many of you know the devil never changes his act? He just keeps bringing it on a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger. First John chapter 5, verse 4. Praise God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Say, I'm an overcomer. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The spiritual condition of the world today can't be any worse than it was back then. It just seems like it because we're the ones living in it. So once again, the church will grow. The church will thrive. The church will multiply. The church will overcome. Praise God. The truth is, warfare begins with us. we got to overcome the beast within, the flesh. The truth is, demon spirits have absolutely no power to bring about destruction unless they can find an open door into a person's mind amen and that only happens by permission yes. right. 
Amen. He can't come against us unless we let him. Anytime you're on the front lines of battle doing something significant for the kingdom of God, the enemy will attack. In fact, he will escalate the attack because you're a threat now. He didn't have to mess with you before because you weren't really a threat. You were just loving Jesus and hoping to get to heaven. Look at Psalms 23. We'll read the whole thing here, Peter. Psalms 23. Praise the Lord. You know, we're, I think sometimes we get concerned that we're going to offend somebody or that we're, you know, then they'll come. At, listen, they're coming after us anyway. They're already, they don't need to worry, we don't need to worry about offending them. They hate us anyhow. Because innately, they know we're a threat. Not in the natural, but because of the spiritual condition and the spiritual manipulation of the enemy, they sense that we're the problem. Because the devil knows we are the problem. The problem. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. He's not talking about death there, but the shadow of death, a type. Then he say he uses types and shadows. The shadow of death is not death physical. It's death to the flesh. It's death to yourself. Right? To your own natural carnal way of thinking. But the good news is, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I put this flesh to death, that's when God's with me. For thou art with me. The moment I step out of the flesh into the spirit, bang, there's God. Not that he wasn't there before, I just don't perceive it. If we want the power of God, the move of God, the anointing of God, we've got to operate by the Spirit. It's awkward. It's unusual. It may make you a little uncomfortable. You just need to enjoy the uncomfortableness of it because there's just going to be more and more of it. It's the only way we can do what we have to do. Will we miss it? Yes. But it won't be the first time I've missed it. Any of you that have been around me long enough know I'm good at that. But I'm not afraid of it. Because I know I have a God that will put me back on the path. If I miss it, he's not going to send me to hell and you too because I've picked up something that was wrong. If he knows my heart and all I'm trying to do is get the victory. All I'm trying to do is be obedient to him the best that I can. And if we deviate from that, he'll get us back in the right place. In the meantime, we've got to get crazy about doing what Jesus wants us to do. Whatever the cost. Whatever people think is irrelevant to me. They've been thinking things about me for a long time, before I was ever a Christian, so this isn't going to be anything new for me. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. So, we need to meditate on the love of God, on the Word of God, on the power of God. In Mark 4, Jesus came under attack when he was preparing to cast out a legion of demons. Get ready. Praise the Lord. So he's going there to get that d- demoniac of Gadara, who had thousands of demons in him. Look at Mark 4.37. And there arose a great storm of wind and waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Arose. That word is used over 200 times in the New Testament. And it means something happens unexpectedly. uh, An element of surprise. So the the devil is trying to do a preemptive strike here. He's trying to get them uh, uh, unready, uh, you know, unprepared. Amen. And the wind overtook them unexpectedly because they, it was a calm day. And, the, you know, these disciples, they're fishermen. They know the lake. They know the, they know the winds and the waves. And they're thinking, it's cool. Let's go. And all of a sudden, something totally unexpected comes up. And they're freaking out because we don't know what's going on. This ain't right. This shouldn't be happening. This isn't the way it normally is, right? That's where we're at today, folks. That's where we're at. A preemptive strike of the devil to undo or to stop this Casting out of demons, this work of the Spirit. 
Praise the Lord. But it's also, and here's where God always slaps him right in the face when he tries to take advantage of us. It's also an opportunity for those disciples to learn what Jesus can do to the wind and the waves. Yes. What he can do to circumstances that look to be overwhelming. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mark 4 verse 39. And he arose, so he did something a little surprising to the devil. He got up, and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Amen. Hallelujah. A great storm became a great calm. Yes. Praise the Lord, because Jesus was involved. Yes. Because they came to the Lord. They didn't try to jump out and bail out and run away and swim to shore. They just tapped into Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we won't go there, but I, 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 can, I, I encourage you to be praying Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. Suzanne brought it up. We're, when we were back in that trailer park 20 years ago, whatever it was. Now I can't even remember how long it was. But it was a long time ago. Unless you're our age, then it was so long ago. Praise the Lord. But anyway, that was, what, that was the scripture that we came up with for our Wednesday night uh, Bible study, prayer meeting, church service. I didn't know why. It just, I, in fact, at the time I thought, well, it's you know, it's a good scripture. It looks good. So, honestly, I mean, I wasn't trying to be, you know, disrespectful. It's just, I just thought that makes sense. But this is how God does things. He'll put the simplest little stuff in us, and we'll say things not having any clue that 20 years later it's going to be revealed to us what God was actually saying. We thought it was just, well, it's a scripture, and so obviously it's good to use. But it was God telling us what we would need when the battle really arose. We thought we were in a battle trying to, you know, keep the swimming pool from flowing over. <laughs> you know, keep the heat in the building instead of, you know, trying to heat the whole trailer park and whatever. But, you know, you were there, praise the Lord. But I'm saying God was preparing. See, there's no time with God. If he'd have told me, you know, well, 20 years from now, Nathan, you're going to, and I'd have thought, oh, yeah, right. Well, 20 years from now, who knows? Who cares? You know, right now I'm 50, so I'm going to live forever, praise the Lord. Right? Yep. No, he knew. He just gave it to me and said, "You'll by and by, you'll understand what it's all about. Again, it's this idea of him hidden manna. Yes. We knew it was there all along, but now all of a sudden it has intent, it has purpose, it has a meaning that it never had before when we first read it, even though it's, it was always of value because it was the word of God. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 well, I'm not going to go there for the sake of time. You know what it is. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. And we, we know what those weapons are. The sword of the spirit. Amen. The, the shield of faith. Amen. The, the, the helmet of salvation. Loins girt about with the gospel. Or loins girt about with the gospel of peace. Our feet shod with the gospel of uh, peace, I should say. Praise the Lord. Loins girt about with truth. We have all those weapons available to us. They're right here and right here. We just have to. We have to put them on every morning. Yes. Put the helmet on so the enemy can't get to your mind and manipulate you, take advantage of you. Amen. So let me close with this. Uh, again, let's go to Psalms 23, verse 4 through 6. We're, we're going to, through the valley of the shadow of death, not death, but the death of of our flesh dominating us, right. our natural minds controlling us. I'll fear no evil. Why? Because when I put that to death, I'm totally conscious of your presence. Yeah. I'm totally aware of you. Yeah. I have a God consciousness as long as I'm operating by the Spirit. Yeah. Otherwise, I got just Nathan's consciousness, and right. believe me, I, you don't want that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to declare God's word, the word that's for our lives. Prophesy to yourself. Yes. Declare to yourself. Put on the whole armor, and we'll drive back the forces of darkness, and we'll shine the light of God's gospel, and the darkness will flee. God's given us a complete armor, and we are ready for the fight. Yes. We die to the flesh, which is fear, yes. and we live to the spirit, which is courage because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Now, we're not done. So I'm going to tell you, 
those of you that are on Wednesday night Bible study, uh, we've, we've seen that one the last Wednesday nights. We've seen it twice, uh, though most of us have anyway. And, and it was a, it's a tremendous teaching. And I'm not here to rebut anything that the prophet said. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm not arguing with anything he said. I agree totally with what he said. But I want to give you some comfort. The Lord woke me up. Well, he didn't wake me up. I was up praying early Thursday morning. And the Lord just started downloading. And I had to run upstairs because I was in the living room on the couch because I didn't want to wake my wife up. And so I'm out there, and it's like 3, 30, 4 o'clock, whatever it was. And all of a sudden, this stuff just starts coming. I didn't have anything to write on. I didn't have any light. I didn't have a pen or anything else. So I, I went upstairs. I grabbed a, note, or a little notepad and came back downstairs with a pen and just started writing it down. So if you could see this, it's just it literally is scribbles. But it was so God that I had to do it. Amen. And I hope it, it helps you because there's a sen- I, I, I sense fear, uh, uneasiness, I guess. Uh, and even though we're laughing about, wow, this is cool, you know, everything you say, it, it, it's a seed and, and you're going to reap a harvest and God's going to, mm, you know, it kind of, and I know what he was saying and he, what he said was absolutely true, but our perception of it might be confused. And so this is what God was saying to me, and I hope that it will bless you if you were there and, and have any issues about it or concerns about it. But look, let's go, Peter, to Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. Acts 20, verse 24. Now remember, the law came by Moses, and this is one of the things that Robin said as well, so I'm just repeating him on this part, and grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Well, the law actually came from, from Jehovah, right, to Adam immediately after the fall, but Moses is the one who brought the written law uh, to Jerusalem. But it's based on the same thing. If you don't keep it, you're going to be in big trouble. That's why we had to have all the sacrifices so that judgment wouldn't come. It would push back the judgment or the harvesting a year at a time. So here's what Acts 20, 24 says. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord. See that? L O. But it's L, small o, small r, small d. So it's not Jehovah, the reaper, or not the reaper, but the one who sends the harvest or who who demands the seed time and harvest. The government, basically, of God. So I might finish my course. And so Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God, again, big G, little o, little d, before the fall, the the way God interacted with Adam, right? All right, look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 now. So we're not talking, this isn't Jehovah that Paul's talking to. He's talking to God. And understanding that Jehovah is just, you know, it's a, it's a, a manifestation of God's government. What you sow is what you're going to reap. And the devil and his angels come for the harvest. If it's seed that is sown contrary to the word of God. Okay, y'all were there, you know that, if you were there. So let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find, obtain mercy and grace to help in the time of need. Praise the Lord. Come to God. Just like Adam did before he listened to the devil. Before he got into the government of God, he just had God. Right. Right? All right. So here's what the Lord was downloading to me. We reap where we have not sown. And the type is, the very type that Robin used, and that is Joseph told Israel when he died, take my bones and get out of Egypt. Because once I'm gone, they're not going to have any respect for you. Right? And they didn't. But Israel Israel didn't leave. They stayed because it was good life at the time. Right? The seed was... We're not going. We're going to stay here because things are going pretty good. So they trusted Egypt instead of what God had spoken to them. And the harvest was 400 years of slavery and bondage. But they kept crying out to God, and eventually God comes, and he says, okay, the death angel's coming for the ultimate harvest here. Put blood on the doorposts, right? Blood of a lamb. Stay inside, and you'll be spared. And then he takes them to the land of milk and honey, a land 
of reaping where they had not sown. This is all a type of what's going to come with Jesus. They were still under the law of, of sowing and reaping. But God was showing them what he had available for them and for us. Types and shadows again of the Old Testament. So they had houses they didn't build. They had vineyards that they didn't plant. They had a harvest, in other words, that they could reap, that they didn't have any part in the sowing of it. It was a promised land. It was a type of the rest of God. What is the rest of God? It's the rest from your sowing and reaping. You know, he said, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. But he gives us a rest from that in Christ. So we're not getting every bad thing that we've ever said or done. Not if we're in Christ. You understand what I'm saying? So he says, this is the government. Jehovah is the government of seed time and harvest. Whatever you sow, it has to be harvested. So if you're sowing bad crap, it has to be, there has to come a harvest and you're going to get the benefit or the negative of it. But what did Isaiah say in chapter 9 and verse 6? The government is on Jesus' shoulders. He's bearing the weight or the burden of that governmental demand of seed time and harvest. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I would have been shouting like crazy, except I knew the wrath of my wife might be worse than God if I woke her up at four in the morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So in Christ, we reap what we have not sown. We reap the harvest that Jesus sowed of righteousness and peace and obedience and total submission to God. And he was our seed. And we received the harvest. But he became our seed and suffered our harvest. It's great. It's this great exchange. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. He, Jesus, became the curse for us. Instead of us, we became the righteousness of God in him. Right standing, again, with God the way Adam had it before the fall before he got into the Jehovah government of sowing and reaping. Yes. He harvested, Jesus did what we sowed. He harvested the curse. He harvested hell. He harvested the punishment. He harvested death. Amen. And he sowed a blessing that we reaped. Heaven, eternal life, oneness with God, favor, blessing. We've been crucified with Christ, dead to that law. But the mind needs renewal to walk in this newness of life. So we have to what? Sow to the Spirit. Matthew 13, 37 through 43. Praise God. Hallelujah. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. He sowed the tares. And the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yes. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Yes. Hallelujah. We're escaping that harvest. Yes. Praise the Lord because of Jesus. God. Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. Praise God. Imagine writing this down in the dark. Praise the Lord. You know, when it's happening, you think, oh, this is overwhelming. I'll, I'll never forget it. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, you will. You will. Write it down. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of thy mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. 
For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir. Even though we've sown to the thorns, well, here's what we're getting is the fir tree. Instead of the briar will come up the myrtle tree. And it'll be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So my seed comes down, I, I, you know, where I think of it as the Word of God. Well, it was, but it was Jesus, yeah. the Word made flesh. Yeah. And anybody who receives Him, it, it's echoed back to God. We go back to God with Him. Are we not seated with Him in heavenly places? And this is the result. We receive that seed. That's the harvest we get. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Us in Christ, sowing yes. the Word of God, which is Christ, the Word in flesh. 1 Peter 1.23. He repeated some things because he knows Nathan. I, I don't have a bad memory because I'm 73. I have a bad memory because of what I did when I was 33. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Born, being born again, not of corruptible seed, yes. but of incorruptible, by the word of God, yes. which liveth and abideth forever. Yes. Praise the Lord. John 12, 24 and 25. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. What are we just talking about? But, yea, though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death. He's repeating that again here. And he says, except a corn of wheat, that's him. But he's telling us we have to live a Christ-like life. And we've thought that's all about just don't have this, don't do this, don't go there. No, he's, what he's saying is you've got to live by the Spirit. You've got to live by the revelation of what Jesus Christ has done for you. And if you will, if you'll lose your life here, if you'll give your flesh here. That's what he told me months ago, and I didn't understand it for sure. But what he was saying was if you'll die to your natural way of doing things, Nathan, you'll live to the Spirit. And that's what God, he wasn't just saying it to me, he's saying it to all of us. I took it personal because that's the way we should take the word of God, even though he's saying it to everybody. Amen? So Jesus, our seed, gave us his harvest. He took our seed upon himself and received our, our harvest. He became sin for us, and we became the righteousness of God in him. We're to sow to the spirit and reap life everlasting. God life here and now. Oh, praise God. Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Praise God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Again, God life is how that's literally translated. Now I want to finish with this. I looked up some words just to, just to kind of satisfy myself as much as anything. But this, these all come from Strong's Concordance. So uh, the Lord, Jehovah, and Strong's is 3068, and it, and it comes from the word Haye. And my Hebrew is not very good, but Have, actually, Have. And it means to become or to cause to come to pass or to follow, which is the whole idea of the seed time and harvest. What goes around comes around. Whatever you sow is what you're going to reap, right? That's the government. That's what Jehovah represents and stands for. But in the New Testament, that same name is Lord is translated curios, and it means exceeding, exceeding God, God exceeding. It means just pouring out a blessing. Yeah. The same one who was demanding is now just giving and blessing. So look at John chapter 12, and let's read this quickly. John chapter 12, 31 through 33, and this is where I'll quit. Praise the Lord. John 12, 31 through 33. 
Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And it, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. So here's the literal way this is written. Now is judgment. Now is harvest of this world. Now it's time for the harvest of this world. Now shall the prince of this world, Satan, the harvester, be cast out. And if I be lifted up, crucified from the earth, if I'm lifted up and crucified from the earth, I will draw all. That word men is in italics. It was not in the original. So what he's literally saying is I will draw all judgment or all harvest to me. Not all men. I'll draw all of the harvest that they should reap. I'll reap. I'll become the one who receives the harvest. I'll draw it to me. This he said signifying what death he should die. So let me just say, John, uh, again, Ron and I were talking about some similar things this morning. So there's still consequences to behavior. We know that. You murder somebody, you're going to jail. But God will go with you. I'm, t- I'm telling you, there's still, there's still a price to be paid for, for choices and for decisions that we make. But God will never leave you or forsake you. You'll pay a, a penalty in the natural. But God will never leave you or forsake you. He's not, he's not going to judge you. He's not going to condemn you. He's not going to punish you because whatever act of stupidity or ignorance or rebellion you commit, once you've accepted Jesus, Jesus took the harvest for that and gave you his harvest. We sow the word of God. Jesus made flesh. And we reap God life here and now. We don't have to wait to die for it. God life is more than just being really happy and giddy and having more than we need. God life is having authority over the devil. God life is putting the enemy to flight. God is crippling him when he comes against us. Just the way Jesus did. Stripping him of all of his power, all of his authority, all of his dominion, ripping it away from him by casting out devils, healing the sick, amen, raising the dead, which I believe is we're going to see it in our lifetime. It has to happen, praise the Lord. we just got to get bold and courageous. And that, the reason I shared this is because I don't want people being fearful. We've got nothing to fear. All, we, 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 all we've got to look forward to is victory. We just have to have the courage to stand up and go into the battle like David did. Take the battle to the enemy. Don't wait for him to come and attack us. Let's go get him. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap again. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience. I hope you were blessed this morning. Go in the power of his might. Whip up on the devil. Amen? Let's get the victory. Hallelujah. Once and for all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm sorry.